Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Let's bow our heads before we start. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for your word and thank you for your love. And please be with this message today in Jesus' most holy and most precious name. Amen. It's nice to be here with you all, even though most of us are at home. Um, every time I get a chance to talk, I like to talk about something that's personal, something that I struggle with in my day-to-day -day life. And um, hopefully you can, some of you can relate to this message. God's love or the world's love. What is your definition of love? The dictionary's definition of love is an intense feeling of deep affection or a great interest and pleasure in something. A very important question to ask yourself is, what do I love? The answer to this question will affect how you act. The answer to this question will affect and impact everyone around you. The answer to this question will actually be a matter between life and death. Do you believe that true love is finding the perfect someone or getting married to someone special and living happily ever after? Or for some other people, is it finding that dream car, the car you always wanted your whole life? I've actually heard someone say that they love their car more than their wife because their car didn't tell them what to do and that they were happier driving around in that car than being at home? Is it a sports team that you love? Like when your favorite team makes the playoffs, you, and when they make the playoff, you actually get more excited and you love them more. But as soon as they get kicked off the playoffs, your love begins to fade. I've even heard someone say, I love these shoes, and I have to have them. And when you ask them, why do you have to have these shoes? They're just shoes. They tell you, because if I don't get them now, I will never see them again, and I can't bear to be without these shoes. They match my bag. The world distorts love by trying to make you fall in love with the things of this world. Praise God that we have the Bible to show us what real love is. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 and 17. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 17. It says here, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. I want to go over some of the things that God has done for us. Let's, let's go over some of the examples of love, and let's start with creation. On the first day, God created light. On the second day, He created firmament. On the third day, He created land, sea, and plants. On the fourth day, He created the sun, moon, and stars. On the fifth day, He created creatures in the sea and the birds in the sky. On the sixth day, God created all the animals that live on land and man. And on the seventh day, he rested and blessed it. 
and He created all these things for you and me. Now I want you to think of the biggest gift that you have given a loved one or anyone you know. The biggest gift. Was it a box of chocolates? Was it a bouquet of flowers? Was it a special trip to Hawaii? Was it a brand new car? Do you think any of those gifts can compare to the sun, moon, or stars? Can any of those gifts compare to the sky, the sea, the mountains? We have a very loving God, and all you have to do is step outside to witness the love of our God. Let us turn the, our Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 17. James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father with, of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. I remember there was this one time, there was a group of us, and we were all asked the question, are you excited to go to heaven? Most of the people there said they were excited because they would get to see Jesus. And not only see him, they would get to talk with him and ask him all the questions and get answers for anything that they asked. But I remember there were some people that said they were not excited to go to heaven because heaven sounded boring to them. They felt like the fun things that they were doing here on earth were probably things that they were not going to be able to do in heaven. When I heard them say that, I was very saddened that they would even think heaven could be such a boring place. How can God, who is so grand, the same God that created this world and everything in it, how could anyone think that he would bring us to heaven just to get bored and have nothing for us to do? God is just too awesome and loving. Hearing people talk about not being excited to go to heaven should really make you think about the things that you are attached to in this world. I want to give you all a personal example of what it is like to love something in this world. I am not proud of it, but maybe some of you can relate to this story. It was when I got my first manual standard car, stick shift. It was a red 1988 Toyota Celica GTS. I remember always trying to keep it clean. I would think about it before I went to sleep, and I would think about it the first it was the first thought in my head when I got up. Even after work, I would go for long drives, just me and the car. I would find empty roads to see how fast I could take it. Friends would try to race the mighty GTS, but once I hit that second gear, it was usually over. I would see them in my rear view mirror. I can, I can admit that I really loved that car, and I had let it consume my life. I had let it become an idol in my life. Now, at the beginning of the sermon, I said there was some guy that said he would rather drive his car and spend time with his wife. Just, just so you know, that wasn't me. This story is when I was 18 or 19 years old. So, the person at the beginning of this the sermon is not me, okay? Because I have a feeling some of you are thinking that that's me now. The time in my life when I started to understand that I had many worldly attachments didn't happen till I started reading the Bible on my own. The more I read the Bible, the more I understand God's incredible love for me and for you. It started to get 
excited. I started to get excited about God's Word. Sometimes I would plan to read just one chapter, but then I would end up reading the whole book because I wanted to know what was going to happen next. The more I started to see God's love, the more unselfish I became. I began to stop thinking about what makes me alone happy. I started thinking more about God and others. I started to use this question to checkpoint myself sometimes, and maybe you can use it too. It's a question I used to see if I was attached to worldly things. I, I would ask myself, if Jesus were to come right now, would I want to leave everything I have in this world to be with him? Do you want Jesus to come right now, this very moment? Or do you feel like life is good in this world? Let us turn our Bibles to Matthew 19, chapter 19, verse 16 to 22. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 22. And it says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me but when the young man heard that heard that saying he went sorrowfully away for he had great possessions if you want to know about god's love and how it is different from the world's view of love, all you have to do is read the Bible. It is, it is all in His Word from the beginning of the book till the end of the book. And if you haven't gotten the chance to read it, I greatly encourage you to. Do you ever ask yourself, how close am I with my God? What is my relationship like with my Lord and Savior? I realized that one of the ways to get closer to God is to actually let Him into all aspects of my life. I have to have real conversations with my Lord. When something bad happens in my life, I would talk to God about it. And I wouldn't just ask Him why bad things happen. I would tell Him how I was feeling about it. I would ask Him what He wanted me to do about it. And you know what? Every time I've really talked with God about something that upset me, He has sent His Holy Spirit to comfort me. But I have a close, but to have a close relationship, you can't only go to someone in your time of need. You also have to share the good times. You have to share the joys in your life, the happy times. When something good happens, I thank God because I know that everything good comes from Him. On almost, on almost everything that I do, I try to include Him in it. When I started to have a real relationship with God, I started to have less stress. I started to have less fears. I started to be less selfish. I started to care about the things God wanted me to do. We all know that the only way to keep close to someone is to constantly spend time with them. Think about how much time you spend with the people that you love. If you love someone, you for sure want to spend as much time as you can with them. You start to constantly long for them. 
One of the reasons people don't see the love of God is that they are too busy to pay attention of everything God does for us in our lives. If we would just stop for a moment and realize that everything we have comes from God, we would see how God cares for us and loves us so much. The education you have, that comes from God. The job, the career you have, that comes from God. The roof over your head, that comes from God. The food we eat every day, that comes from God. The beating of your heart at this very moment, that comes from God. When you realize how loving and caring Jesus truly is, the next time you pray, it will be filled with thankfulness. Thankfulness for a loving God. Let us now turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. It reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested in toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. After reading these texts, God's love for us is undeniable. No love is stronger than the love of God. No love is greater than the love of God. Let us all choose to accept the love of God so we can be with Him who first loved us. God bless.